So uh, we'll continue on where we left in the last session on Snowflake. Uh, to just quickly recap, so so far on Snowflake we have seen uh, something called as a stage object. So in in our terminology, it's nothing but a data connector. It connects to uh, different data sources. Uh, we have created external stage that connects to Amazon S3 bucket, and we have also seen while loading the data where we can do some sort of transformations on the data. before we load it into our snowflake database so and we also seen uh, how do we uh, at a very preliminary level how do we tackle uh, or identify errors if there are any right so when there are errors or oh, what there are three options that we can take about and we looked into these things in the last session so today we will cover uh, we will keep it simple uh, but uh, yeah so we will see uh, one more object called file format object and then we will understand so uh, in and, and later we will look about how do we deal with when we encounter such errors while loading data how do we actually treat them and how do we process them uh, using snowflake so that's what we'll focus today uh, first of all uh, we'll start with the file format object so if you would recall uh, our earlier code right this is a typical copy statement that we have been doing all together to load data from an stage object so this is the stage object that we have created and from this we are loading into the table that we have created so if you would see this but there is a certain set of clauses that we are adding to this copy statement one is file format and the, the, there are such many other clauses that we can add so especially if you would look at this file format of uh, clause we have specified certain properties to it that details out the properties of the file that is present in this particular uh, data source so we are just specifying this file that we are referring to csv etc etc and so on and we can go ahead and specify any other uh, data uh, uh, formats as well so now it's e uh, there's a easier way and a better practice uh, rather than typing all the properties like this way every time you want to copy there's a easier and better practice to do uh, that and that is using an ob object called file format object so let's quickly uh, look how do how can we work on that but before that let's just see a couple of points so as we are, as i have already told so we can basically uh, create a properties set of properties for a particular file be it csv excel xml anything uh, and we can store them for our uh, easy reference in the future and second uh, uh, we have so far only connected with uh, csv files but uh, snowflake is a uh, slightly different from the conventional sql databases so it also has support to unstructured data uh, such as json types packet xml etc and there are these are some things the last two are something that even i don't know uh, but yeah so th these there is uh, support for this unstructured data formats as well so that means you can create file format objects for these data uh, data formats as well so now uh, enough on the uh, theory of it let's just go and create uh, those objects uh, first we'll create a a temporary table uh, so just a random sql table using a create statement i'll create this table second this has to be okay yeah. so created a table now easy way to uh, uh, create a file format uh, is uh, in order to maintain it and keep it in ordered format we will just create one more schema manage db and within that we will create a uh, table sort of a thing called uh, or schema actually in this manage database Uh, called file formats, and we will store all the file formats that we create in this thing, so that it will be easy to uh, maintain and manage these file formats going ahead. So, and within that file format schema, we will now create the uh, file format objects. These are all simple statements, just to create and uh, replace uh, commands. Uh, and we are table, and here we are creating. Uh, whenever we want to create a file format, we just specify that keyword file format. When we want to create stage, we'll specify the stage, etc. And within that, uh, uh, create I'm creating a. A file format with the name my file for uh, my file format, right? So now let's look at the properties of these file formats. Just to now that it has been created, so we can use the describe command. to look at all the properties of this particular 
file format now if you would see the bottom table here you can see there are almost some 20 22 properties so now this is why it becomes important why we have to create these things because if you have to type all these 22 properties while writing a copy code every time in this line here it will be a, a very unusual and uh, a tedious process so that is why the, we can create these objects and store them as a, as a particular uh, object and use them uh, uh, easily so here let's have a quick look at the properties we can see the type of the file that we have uh, property value and there is a default value which uh, uh, means when you don't uh, when you create a particular file format object this will be the default value but you can change it later uh, to other data formats like json and xml will will come to that but uh, okay we can see a field delimiter uh, skip header option for uh, for a csv file and there are certain uh, formats for certain types of fields uh, and then trim spaces if there are any uh, spaces in, in your data scene that can be managed that can be taken care of if there are any nulls seen in your data and if you want to replace them with certain value while you are loading from that file format you can use this particular property uh, to give a specific value to place nulls with and encoding sometimes uh, the default encoding uh, utf8 will work for most of the cases but uh, if you are involved in uh, there, there are some foreign languages involved let's say chinese or something like that in that case this may not work so you may have to go with uh, some other encoding. So th th there are lots of properties that you can play with uh, that uh, this particular uh, file format will give you control on. So uh, now that we have created a particular file format object that is a CSV uh, file format, now you, uh, let's use this uh, to actually uh, copy the data uh, into one of the tables that we created. Uh, okay, let's. We will use the same copy statement, but instead of specifying all the individual properties in the file format uh, class, what we'll do is we will just uh, give it a name file format and uh, direct it to the object that we have created, file format uh, object. Now, based on those properties that were set on this particular uh, uh, file format object, it will try to uh, uh, load the data accordingly. So if you would notice one thing, uh, the properties that we have seen earlier, the null if uh, maintaining the formats of dates and uh, uh, booleans etc all those things they will allow you to get a preliminary data cleaning uh, uh, using these file formats so managing so removing nulls etc or keeping uh, taking out the spaces etc all these things there are certain properties like that which will help you to uh, uh, do a very basic level of cleaning while loading the data into your tables. So that is one way uh, uh, these file formats can be uh, used. Now let's look at a couple of other interesting aspects of this file format objects. So let's say now So when I try to uh, run this code here, if you would notice, I'm getting some errors, right? So, and uh, currently we are getting the error here because what it is telling is the uh, numeric value amount is not recognized. Uh, so it's basically, uh, let me pull up the data here. So this is the table that we are trying to bring in and we have the first row as the names of the columns and it is trying to put this name also into that particular column as a value because of which it's actually uh, getting an uh, data type error because we wanted we have defined the amount column as a integer but it is unable to pass the string value in it so because of that it's giving that error so for that what we have to uh, ask this particular load to do is please skip the first row uh, uh, that uh, so that it will uh, not give the errors so for that, what you have to do is we have to alter this file format object, one of the properties. Let's uh, quickly do that by uh, a simple statement in SQL called alter. So what you do is please uh, alter this particular file format object and set the skip header equal to one. So once I run this, 
uh, it has been altered i can quickly check the property if it has been changed skip header it has been changed to one now if i run this copy uh, command again yeah so if we, uh, now uh, the error has been changed uh, we can see this is the uh, another error which we have seen in the uh, database itself the uh, source data itself so the, the so the column error is now gone now these uh, because of these uh, string entries in the values that those errors are coming up so the data has been loaded like leaving for those two rows 1498 rows have been loaded so this is how you can change the properties uh, of a particular uh, file format object uh, so there is another way also to do that so instead of altering the object once it is created you can also set properties while creating a file format object so here i'm creating another file format object and uh, i'm setting it uh, directly uh, i don't want csv for it i want a json format and a time format to be or some other property i can set any other properties that i want and i can create like that and uh, my deep my, uh, now my properties will default to the properties of a json format so if you can see here this is json and uh, uh, keep in mind here if you would go quickly go through the list of properties here this will be very uh, almost different to the properties that we have seen on a csv format so this depends on the type of format actually so if it is a json or csv the rest of the properties will be uh, dependent on the type of property that uh, the data file format object holds so uh, th that is one thing to note so if i change from json to xml that then the rest of the properties will also change again so that is to treat those type of format uh, data formats in a more uh, uh, specific manner so uh, so that is one thing let me quickly this go ahead yeah uh, if you see the eighth property which says null if yes so just considering for only list or uh, data type right that means if we find any nulls in the uh, string type then we are changing it to blank uh, currently if, yes uh -huh. uh, what if we have null in the integer null in the what where uh, integer data types in future no in, in, in integers data type okay integer acha okay. uh i think it would work even then uh, so you are you are asking that if it, currently it's mentioned as list so it might only work on list is that correct yes exactly right yeah okay um i'm i'm not quite sure if but most likely it is supposed to work on uh, in the documentation it mentions that no matter what uh, it, it should not be needed be a list it can be any uh, data type it will normally work okay yeah because you cannot define a column as a list you can define a column as a, i think the property type here it it it, it is not uh, reciprocating with the data type of a column so it's this is something else so it can work on integers or anything okay yeah, yeah. um okay so one uh, one thing to note here is so i've i've changed the file format object to json right now if you want to change back with the default value is csv as you have seen earlier if you want to change uh, let's say let me try to load the data once again okay and uh, with this json uh, command and see what happens um so if i i'm just doing the same copy statement uh, now i'm working on the json uh, file format object and it will show a uh, error because my source data is a csv uh, csv file but my the format which i'm using is a json file so it's saying that json file cannot be uh, it cannot match and it will not work so now if i try to uh, fix this error and uh, change the uh, type right from json to csv uh, so i create an another alter statement alter this file format object from uh, json to csv uh, if i click that it will not it will not snowflake will not allow uh, that particular change so uh, so this is the point to keep in mind here we can change from csv to any other formats like json or xml or any other parquet etc but we cannot do a, a reverse change from xml or json to csv so this is how uh, 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 it, it, it will 
currently cut it's currently in snowflake so if you want to uh, csv file format now you have to actually recreate the entire object with the default properties or uh, without changing the type so that you will create a uh, uh, csv based uh, object now let me quickly run and i am sure it will work uh, yeah we can see uh, okay okay so uh, currently again that column name is coming into picture okay but anyhow uh, we will we'll keep that in mind uh, and we'll, there are a couple of things that we can do here uh, so instead of actually i can go ahead and change the file format object again to uh, set the property of uh, uh, skip header to one but if i don't want to change that again and again let's say this particular file format object is being used for several other uh, uh, tables as it is. I don't want to change the file format object, but I want a temporary uh, way to load this table uh, uh, using this particular file format object. In that case, what I can do is I can overwrite the properties of a file format object by uh, just writing the properties towards the right here. So by after specifying that, that there is no commas here. So you just specify what properties do you want to change. Uh, fill delimiter. is equal to this and uh, I also want skip header right so skip header equal to one so now what will happen is it will take the properties which are there in this object and uh, it will overwrite these two properties only for this particular copy statement on that particular file format object so if I run this again now we can see that uh, column error has been gone and the two other errors that we have normally those are coming up those things we can uh, deal with later so uh, that is one way to do it now this is everything about the file format object actually now we have already seen a stage object we are calling it as data connector right in the in the past so now if you look at that particular object just like stage object it has also certain properties allocated with it so let's look at the uh, properties of one of the stage objects that we have created so this is the stage that we have created. If I run this code, what you can see here is um, th there is a property called type and which is also referring to CSV and record delimiter, field delimiter, skip header, date and time format. So if you can see most of the properties in the stage object are also uh, uh, are similar with the properties of the file format object, right? So what does that mean is uh, they this provides you an another additional flexibility. So let's say you are connecting to a certain data source. Uh, currently, we are connecting to AWS S3 bucket. And if you're sure that every file that you get from that particular S3 bucket has a specific type of format only, but nothing else apart from that, then instead of creating a file format object, you can directly fix the uh, uh, object prop, uh, file format properties at a stage level so that the by default, whenever you are creating uh, uh, or copying data from that particular data source, it you don't have to specify this. It will directly take this uh, uh, properties that were set on the AWS stage uh, level, and it will copy the data. So let me uh, and we can also change the properties of uh, stage just uh, just like how we can change the uh, properties of a file format object using the alter statement. So currently, I'm setting the file format to at the stage level to skip header one and once i can change this i look look at the properties and i can see that this has been changed now <clears throat> let me uh, quickly show you something and close on the file format object so these are the two objects that we have seen file format and stage object and these are all the list of properties that we have under the file uh, stage object and these are the list under the file format object if you would see the properties under file format object is a subset of the uh, stage object. So all these properties are present actually here. So without actually creating a file format object, you can also manage with the just by setting the properties of stage object. And there are some additional uh, properties that are only specific to stage object, uh, which uh, we will get to uh, at a later stage in time. But this is just for your understanding. Uh, any questions on this particular object before we move on to uh, next interesting point?
okay fine so th- that's about the file format object and uh, now we'll look into something very interesting in snowflake which is called as a uh, copy option so we have already seen in the past uh, uh, le- so let me actually uh, copy options in normally in snowflake they tend to provide a uh, certain amount of um, uh, capability to maneuver the data that you are copying into your database so in short yeah they they try to provide some sort of flexibility and uh, control for you to tweak the data uh, before you load them into your actual database tables so the syntax typically goes with the copy statement you write your entire copy statement as usual and uh, any copy options that you have you should add them as additional clauses in, in each line uh, just below that particular statement so we have already seen one of the copy options uh, which is called uh, on error right so we have seen uh, on error here so this is this is one of the copy options uh, there are multiple copy options we will explore one more today uh, apart from on error okay and that particular let's just create a, a table uh, for that we copy some code to get the plea yeah so i'm just creating some database and table inside that database uh, for us to work with and after that i'm also creating an additional uh, a temporary aws stage uh, which is referring to some other location in amazon s3 where we have our files let me i can quickly show the files that we are referring to in this s3 bucket uh, using the list command if i can just list and the stage name it will show me the, all the files that are there in that s3 bucket so currently in this s3 bucket there are two files orders and orders two both are csv files so now what i'll try to do is the current the second op, uh, copy option that we are looking at right is called a uh, validation mode okay let me yeah it, it's called validation mode and uh, what it uh, basically uh, enables you to do is let's say if you are uh, you have a you're working on client database and you are trying to uh, import data from one of the data sources into your already existing tables and that table is very important so if you uh, at times we may think if we enter the wrong data it may mess up the entire uh, uh, database or that, that that particular table right Uh, so for that reason snowflake has enabled this particular validation mode so what it enables you to do is without actually copying data into your database it will allow you to look for are there any issues with this data that i am about to copy so that, that is what it will enable you to do to verify basically data uh, before actually uh, copying data into your system so uh, let me copy this uh, sim- again as i said it will go with the simple copy statement and the additional clause here is validation mode there are um, uh, multiple options uh, there are couple of options that we can do here for validation mode one of them is the return errors so currently what we are asking for is uh, please copy data uh, from this particular s3 bucket both the files where all the files where there is you can see the word order in it and uh, please re- uh, show me any returns if you find any uh, in those files that's what it is uh, doing and currently it's saying uh, it has went through all those files and saying that hey there are no errors in those two files that's what it's telling in that case what i can do is okay if there are no errors i can just change the uh, validation mode let me just copy this to uh, another uh, value uh, is to return let's say some sample number of rows uh right uh, i can change the file uh, to my need uh, and now it will show uh, some of the uh, f- some five rows uh, from those files right so these are the two options uh, which we can use to actually verify the data before actually it, it being loaded now we have seen in this case there are no errors so it worked all fine let's see what happens when there are actually errors so uh, we have created uh, one uh, uh, file right where uh, where is this yeah this particular file where we have these couple of errors right so now we'll try to load this particular file into the table that we have created and see how the validate mode responds 
soil first uh, uh, clean the table and i'll run the return errors command once again right and here we can see uh, there are certain errors that it is pointing out to and in the first column we can see the error name so i can see uh, the again uh, column name error is coming up uh, uh, these errors needs to be fixed and then i can also see the two errors that i am familiar with right 200 and these string values instead of integer values so uh, and we can see the file from which these particular uh, uh, errors are arising at what row number these particular errors are arising and also if i scroll to little to the right i can also see the entire row let's say for example this one uh, where that particular uh, error has occurred so uh, so this is the typical result uh, when we uh, do that now what i can do is let me uh give you another example where are, there are a couple of other errors so this is another s3 bucket where there are certain errors so we know in these files these these are the errors that we know but let's just check on some other file that which we haven't seen and check uh check it if it has any errors so i've floated this particular s3 location and uh, check if this particular one has any errors first of all let me see how many files this particular location has i'll use the list command uh, and uh, okay this one has four files and uh, there are two files supposedly with errors we'll see what those errors are i'll run this copy statement again and it has shown me uh, the file names let's see we check okay there are those two uh, files have been coming up and these are the errors that i can see uh, this is something that we already seen and there are certain negative values or uh, non numeric values that have been entered in the columns that have supposed to have numeric values uh, so this is one way we can catch the errors uh, um, uh, into the uh, data uh, before we load them into the database <coughs> so uh, now we have uh able to catch these errors now it's all about being able to uh, treat these errors right so let's say for example uh we have uh, catch let's say some 100 rows or something in that case you cannot just simply ignore those things uh you have to uh, store them in some place so that you can look at them and treat them if uh, clean them if required so that is where uh, uh see So what I'll do is, uh, uh, in the current validation mode, as as I've already mentioned, we are not loading any data. We are just looking at errors if there are any errors. That means if I want to actually store this data, I cannot do that in a validation mode because it's not loading any data. It cannot load any data. So for us, in order to store the errors, I have to go with uh, 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 something which we have seen in the past called. Uh, uh, you know uh, on error options or we can also do with validation mode okay let's actually explore both so what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll have to just do a roundabout here so let me get the errors again make sure that okay the same four errors that's good uh, and uh, what i can do is there is a simple command which i can use to get the error records so as as i've already shown to you earlier right there is a particular column here on the right which says rejected record which holds the information of all the uh, rows where i have encountered an error so using this particular column from this table i can get those records so that is what here we can do so what it's what i'm doing is i'm please create a table uh, as re uh, with a rejected name and what i want in that table is please take this particular rejected column from my this particular uh, uh, result that that that's what we are trying to get here so what i'm doing is uh, a result scan is a function that enables you to capture this particular result of any query that you run uh, and uh, create that as a table uh, so that's what it is doing uh, currently if i see here I'm uh, uh, for each query that we run, there is something called as co uh, query ID. I can just copy this query ID and uh, replace it here in this function. 
and what it will do is now i am passing this particular entire result of this query into this as a table and if i run this particular statement alone you should see uh, yeah so these are the records that we have seen in the last so i can create this as a table and i can do a simple select star and look at these tables in my table uh, records in my table so i can uh, use this to process later now that let me uh, close by showing one last method so one easy way uh, so uh, skip that for now okay so now that we have added uh, this particular record we can use a simple function uh, to treat this particular object so for example uh, we can see all of them are actually comma delimited right so what i can do is there's a simple uh, there's a function you don't have to worry about these functions at all there's a function called split part what it does is basically it will split the particular record uh, based on the delimiter that you provide and uh, it will split into s s the amount, the number of columns that you specify so what we are, what we are currently doing is please split this record uh, into uh, based on the comma value and the first uh, uh, splitted value please consider it as order id second i'll be considered the amount and that's what we are doing so let me quickly run this and so th this will basically split the same uh, data into multiple records and i can create this uh, uh, as a table itself and uh, yeah let me just show the table here and we can uh, now we can ha we have all the uh, even the records which were rejected during the copy because of errors saved as a table inside our database yeah we can automate this particular process uh, so for example this particular query id we see here right uh, it, it's not feasible to actually manually enter this particular query id by copying it from here right so there is a particular function that we can use to automate this process without manual intervention that is called uh, last query id so this is a function that extracts the uh, last query id automatically and uh, uh, makes this process automated